What's up, everybody? Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Thank you so much for being with us. We trust that God is faithful to speak through us, John chapter 9, as we read it together. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. As we read God's Word, John chapter 9, reading in the Gospel of John. This is my favorite section of the Gospel of John. I've probably said that before if you've been with us as we read through the Gospel of John. But this is my favorite story. It's more, it's more of my favorite than the resurrection of Lazarus. It's more of my favorite than the healing of the man at the Pool of Bethsaida in chapter 5. Uh, it is a beautiful story of how God... Uh, in Christ heals men, women, and children, particularly this one man who was born blind. But it also speaks to the reality of hardships are in our lives for the purposes of the glory and majesty of God. And I love how this story just highlights that to us. John chapter one, John chapter nine, beginning in verse one. As he, that's Jesus, passed by, he saw a man born blind, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made with mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. I'm just going to stop right there because I think there are two things that are so important at the beginning of this story, in this first paragraph of this narrative. The first is Jesus is walking by, and as he walks by, he sees a man who was blind from birth, who has been born blind. Now, this man has been born blind, and we're told he was a man. That means he was at least 16, 17 years old, most likely probably older than that. He'd been blind all of his life. This is not some Johnny come lately to blindness, uh, though that is a tragic reality, and I said it somewhat flippantly, and I apologize for that. Um, But this is a man who understood from the very beginning of his life that he could not see. He understood what blindness was. He understood what infirmity was. And certainly in those days, it was very difficult. They didn't have the the blessings of modern medicine and treatment and understanding and um, uh, uh, the wonderful blessings of of law that protects and gives equal opportunities to those and uh, accommodations to those who have handicaps. In those days, it was very difficult. And so his parents had to lead him around, and the challenge was significant. He was born blind. Now, the disciples ask a very important question, and that question is, Rabbi, who sinned that this man may be born blind, or this man was born blind, this man or his parents? Now, that question comes from an idea that specific sins caused brokenness in the lives of people, that that, that brokenness was a direct consequence of sin. Now, we do believe that brokenness is a direct consequence of sin in a very general sense, right? The Prior to sin coming into the world in Genesis chapter 3, prior to what we call the fall of man and Adam and Eve's original sin, there was no hardship, there was no brokenness, there was no death, there was no handicap, there was no pain, etc. But after that, all of creation was affected by their sin and that broken relationship with God. And so the idea was that specific sins cause specific illnesses and so the idea maybe you read the book the book of excuse me the book of job and job is in a terrible situation he's lost everything and his friends come to him and say hey job uh you 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 obviously have done something that caused this to happen you've got some kind of sin and god's judging you god's disciplining you because the idea was that specific illness specific uh hardship specific brokenness specific pains specific uh, difficulties were related to specific sins and therefore the judgment of God on those sins. And so the disciples say, who, who's, who sinned? They're, they're asking a legitimate question. Probably a debate that was being had in their society of the day, but, but who sinned, this man or his parents? Now for us it's an odd question because 
one, we don't believe that connection exists in the specific way that they did, but also how can a man who has never been born sin? But they're asking a question. And Jesus' answer is staggering. It was staggering to them. It should be staggering to you and me as well. It was not any particular sin that caused this. Yeah, sin caused this because of the brokenness that comes from sin in the world. But it wasn't any particular sin of the parents or this man that caused this man to be born blind. He was born blind, and we're specifically told by Jesus in the words of John, he was specifically born blind, quote, that the works of God might be displayed in him. The works of God might be displayed in him. Friends, I I want you to understand something very important. Hardship in our lives, though a result of our fallen condition, sometimes does not, and oftentimes does not have a direct correlation to specific events or activities or actions. They are oftentimes brought into our lives as a result of the glory and majesty and purpose plan of God so that the glory of God might be displayed through you, in you, to the world. This man was born blind so that Jesus could touch him and that he could receive sight, and that sight would point people not to the miracle itself, not to the man who received sight, but rather to the one who gave him that sight. And that's what God does. That's what God does for you. That's what God does for me. And that's God's purposes in all things. And there's a purpose for everything, and it is the glory and majesty of God. God, we'll see it later on when Jesus says to Mary and Martha. He says, Martha, at the tomb of Lazarus, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Things happen so that God may be glorified in our lives. Jesus, in his grace, heals the man, powerfully gives him his sight back. But Jesus says something else. We must work while it is stale light. We must work while it is still day, night is coming. He knows what's down the pipe. He's about to be crucified. We must work now to testify to the glory and majesty of God and the reality of Christ that when he is dead, dead and resurrected people would believe the resurrection and trust in him it is all pointing people to the lord jesus christ do you see jesus in this do you see jesus in your circumstances do you understand that everything happens for a purpose and that is so that the glory of god may be displayed in all things you guys have a great day god bless you i'll catch you next time you can